The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today I'm going to do a full test and performance evaluation on the Aquila 44. This is an ocean going catamaran made for going distances. Let's start by taking a look right here at the first operational station, the helm. As we make our way up to the flying bridge, right alongside the companionway, here are our switches for the 12 volt functions up on the flying bridge. And take a look at this helm. Center mounted, compass right in line with the steering station, 12 inch display right in front and center. Volvo Penta's EVC display over on the right hand side giving us selectable information and over on the left hand side, Raymarine depth gauge and autopilot. Down below, we've got the remote control for the spotlight, fire extinguisher system, the digital throttle with its host of features, joystick for the bow thruster and the digital ignitions. Just below, VHF radio. The wrapped steering wheel is mounted to a tilt base. There's a stereo over on the left hand side, storage just underneath the wheel and a beverage holder over to the side. I like how there are handholds everywhere we go. Visibility wise, it's of course great because it's a center console. However, backing into a slip, we can look down the companionway and we've got a clear view of the stern on the starboard side. For the port hand side, we'll rely on a glance down at the screen where we have a view from the camera mounted just above the transom. Just inside the cabin is a bit of a nav station with open counter space, VHF. Notice we've got an outline of the boat that tells us when any of the pumps come on or our nav lights just around the side. We have a couple of control panels. First one gives us our main breakers and then our batteries for the house generator and the two engine start batteries, our generator controls and the inverter controls, plus we've got all of our gauges for the main tankage. Directly across is our main switch panel with our digital amp gauges on top, switching our 120 volt panel, 240 volt panel, and then 12 volt underneath. And notice how we can sit comfortably while we analyze the switches on both panels. Now, here's something interesting about the electrical system on the 44. You really only need the generator to power the air conditioning and the hot water heater in the range. And we can even narrow that down a little bit more. The hot water can be heated from the engines and everything else can be powered from the inverter. Take a look underneath the salon deck. Here's a hatch that lifts underneath these hatches our bus boards, another one right here, and notice just behind are the house batteries, but more to the point is that even under the deck here, we've got the same fit and finish that we're seeing throughout the boat, and also that all of these electrical components are now out of the bilge area and into a dry area. Now on the main deck to the starboard side, there's an option for putting a helm right in this position. If you go with that option, then you lose a little bit of counter space, wine storage, but you'll keep the TV and the storage just underneath. And of course, how can we not mention the outstanding panoramic visibility that's almost completely wrapping around this deck. To the port side, just ahead of the swim platform, we've got a city water inlet, cable and shower, two 50 amp shore power connections. The side decks are accessed from stairs to both port and starboard in the cockpit. And because of this boat's 21 foot 6 inch beam, there's just so much space to these side decks. Aquila apparently saw no reason to compromise side deck space to create more interior living space. And I have to agree with that decision. 37 inches between the cabin side and the rail, which comes up 26 inches. And I'm also happy with the fact that there are rails underneath the cabin side, so we have a safe transition all the way to the bow. The rail height continues all the way to the working end of the bow, and notice there are hatches all along the side decks and on the bow, and clearly they're made to take weight. The bow rail splits so we can have bow in docking, and now let's look at the working features. Hatches on the foredeck lift with turn and lock latches. They're gasketed all the way around in the open position. They're supported with stainless steel struts. Inside, we've got a water tank and two water pumps, plus plenty of storage. Notice we also have stairs that allow us to get down deep into the storage. I'd like to see lift and lock latches instead of the turn and lock latches. To the starboard side, we still have a water tank. This time, no pumps, but now we do have the battery for the bow thruster. The ground tackle is accessed through two hatches. The first one gives us access to the roller. The second one, the windlass, cleat for securing the road, wash down, and the remote control for the windlass. Deploying the anchor is rather straightforward, and once it's down, we have a couple of options. 
Conversely, we can flip the chain stopper and advance the windlass a click or two just to take the load off the windlass itself. Secondly, Akela is among the very few builders that integrate a snubber line into its ground tackle to take the jarring effect out of the chain road every time it comes taut, which happens with every passing wake. To deploy it, simply attach the hook to the chain, keep tension on an attached string, and lower till it takes the strain. Done. And notice there's a secondary roller above the primary, so now we can have two anchors ready to go in a moment's notice. Now let's take a look at the engine rooms where both of these engines have independent fuel and electrical systems. We'll start on the port side, and first observation, I'd like to see a ladder to help me get into the compartment. Now, of course, front and center, we've got the Volvo Penta D4 300 horsepower diesel engine. It's connected to a V-drive with a shaft going right out the back. And in the back, we've got the air chiller system. There's an auxiliary fuel tank underneath that. Just to the left-hand side, the two Glendening cord reels. This boat has a Spectra water maker on it. Looking forward, I can see the Micron filters, the Raycor filters, the intake for the engine, and I noticed that the through-hull fittings aren't brass or bronze. Now behind me are the fuel tanks for this engine. There are two of them with an interconnect underneath and I can turn that valve on and off as desired. Now I also said that there was an auxiliary tank on this boat. That's an option and we can add fuel to either the port or starboard tanks from this auxiliary tank. Now to the starboard side, it's basically just the engine and the generator. Again, operating off of an independent fuel system. Now because we have the generator that's also drawing off of this fuel tank, you're able to transfer fuel from the port tank to the starboard tank one way. When it came time to get underway, I was curious to see how the 44 handled around the dock. Those props are so far apart, it should provide for some exceptional handling. And to be clear, this is a prop and rudder boat, no pods, and even though there's a bow thruster, I was intent on doing all of my maneuvers without touching it. As it turns out, my thoughts were accurate in that she's extremely well mannered around the dock. Just a pulse into gear with a single engine gets that side moving, making it easy to pull away from any dock at any angle. With no room in front or behind us, I was able to angle and bring the 44 out, show superb directional control while backing, and then rotate her with just the twin screws, again while never touching the bow thruster. Once underway, I was then able to get a good feel for how responsive she is with those props and rudders, and again, no surprise that she bends around tight turns with ease that will add confidence to any operator, especially those moving up from smaller boats. She's got all hydraulic steering, so it's a firm touch, plus, there'll be no heavy cranking around the race pylons. She's got a six-turn throw from lock to lock, so no matter how aggressive the captain, the 44 will remain comfortable. The Aquila 44 has a length overall of 44 feet 11 inches, a beam of 21 feet 6 inches, and a draft of 3 feet 10 inches with the sacrificial skegs. Without them, the draft drops down to 3 feet 3 inches. With an empty weight of 35,053 pounds, 60% fuel and three people on board, we estimated our test weight at 37,422 pounds. With the twin 300 horsepower Volvo Penta D4 V-Drive diesels turning at 3550 RPM, we reached our top speed of 24.5 miles per hour. Best cruise was measured at 3000 RPM. It was at that speed that the 20 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into one mile per gallon and a range of 258 miles all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 290 gallon total fuel capacity. We reached planing speed in 8.9 seconds and accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 17.8 seconds. Now, those are impressive numbers, and a lot of that has to do with the catamaran's narrow hull design and entry, but Aquila also incorporates the bulbous bow design, well known to improve performance. And while we can't validate that it has indeed improved this boat, since we can't test without it, it seems the numbers speak for themselves. Of course, we had calm conditions on test day, but cats, as a rule, love waves. It's why high-speed ferries are cats. In our turn test, we found that the 44 remains level through the turn, again in true cat fashion, and as we said earlier, even a heavy-handed captain can't upset the 44's comfortable handling characteristics. It seems that the only thing we're left worrying about is finding a place to dock a boat with a 21-foot 6-inch beam, plus a little wiggle room, easily solved for most people. So we've got a comfortable handling boat, a great cruiser with the range that we need, and the close quarters handling around the dock that we've come to appreciate from the brand all rolled into the Aquila 44. And that is my full test and sea trial for BoatTest.com. I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.